And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Monday morning's flying weather. A lot of IFR here over the eastern interior, as well as the North Slope Arctic coast, uh, thinning out a little here as you get uh, in toward the Alaska Range, but then expanding as you head south and southeastward there. The IFR uh, into the Manuska Valley, eastward into the northern Panhandle, and some IFR here over the uh, southwestern Bristol Bay area, north side of the Alaska Peninsula, VFR, Northern Bering Sea, southwest coast, a little bit of marginal VFR here for the uh, Kuskokwim Mountains, and uh, Kobuk Valley out to Kotzebue, VFR, marginal VFR for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And for the afternoon, marginal VFR, as you can see, pretty much uh, holds status quo out to the west here. VFR continues in Nunavak Island to St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound up to Kotzebue Sound, and the lower Yukon River Valley out to the southwest coast into Bristol Bay. Marginal VFR here over south central Alaska, still some IFR for the Barren Islands, and a lot of IFR here, central, eastern interior, all the way up to the Arctic coast, and now a narrow band of IFR for the North Gulf Coast on down across the Panhandle. And for Tuesday morning, Still IFR here for the uh, North Gulf Coast, mostly from around Valdez eastward, covering much of the southeast coast, marginal in the Gulf of Alaska, marginal VFR back up into the Barren Islands there, and Fognac Island into southern Cook Inlet, likely Kamishak, Kachemak Bay areas, but VFR for the uh, northern Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Susitna Valley, marginal for the Manuska Valley, and the Tanah Valley as well looks like marginal VFR, IFR, Koyukuk, Kobuk Valley, out to, or northern Kobuk Valley, out to, to the west a little bit there, but marginal VFR for the northwest coast, IFR for the central western Arctic coast, and again, not much change over the Bering Sea, marginal VFR covering a significant area out there, now up across Nunavak Island to the southwest coast and into most of Bristol Bay. For the afternoon, that doesn't change too much, uh, backs off a little bit here over the uh, northeast Bering so Nunavak Island becoming VFR again, as well as St. Lawrence Island staying VFR. Lucian's though, Pribilofs, marginal VFR. And for the Alaska Peninsula, marginal VFR here from the Kuskokwim Valley across Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, on up into Prince William Sound and at least the eastern and southeastern Copper River Basin. Marginal VFR for the southeast coast with IFR over toward the border, but good VFR here, central northern interior, actually from... Uh, Looks like uh, the Susitna Manuska Valley areas all the way up to the Arctic coast. And the Tuvik and Adigan, expect IFR flying conditions there through the, those two passes in the Brooks Range. Lake Clark and Merrill, Mar or VFR, marginal VFR for rainy, and then IFR for windy in the eastern Alaska Range. IFR, sure bet there, Isabel and Mentasta, both IFR. And for Tanita, IFR to start, and then some point in the day becoming marginal VFR. Later in the day, better chances of that happening. And for Portage, IFR. And Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels here showing warmer air, trying to push back to the west there, but uh, 2,000 feet right around Cordova, two to 4,000 feet over the northern Panhandle, 6,000 feet down toward Heidelberg, over toward uh, Metlakatla and those areas, Annette Island. And for icing, considerable moderate rime icing here, sliding up, continuing into the southeast coast. And then another surge here, lifting northward into the central interior areas, all the way up to the Arctic coast there, and improving icing conditions down to the south there, but still lingering of the uh, ending from south to north here for Cook Inlet. And a little bit of icing thread here with uh, those systems out over the Pribilof Islands to just north of the eastern Aleutians. And the jet stream, 33,000 feet, showing a trough extending from the Russian Far East all the way down into Bristol Bay. So west-northwest flow, 75 to 90 knots there on the west side of that. And then coming around and subtly is 105 knots right across south-central Alaska, diminishing to 85 knots for the Brooks Range. And the strongest jet here south of the Panhandle, 115 knots across the Queen Charlotte's. But for uh, 9,000 feet, Pretty good southwest winds, 60 to 85 knots across the Panhandle into the uh, Yukon there, and south 60 knots 
Prince William Sound into the Copper River Basin areas, diminishing to 45 knots over the Yukon Flats. East winds 55 knots, central eastern Arctic coast. Good northwest flow here, 40 to 50 knots across eastern Bering Sea down to the Alaska Peninsula, eastern Aleutians as well. And for 3,000 feet, a couple of lows out here over the Bering Sea and some pretty good winds associated with those uh, small systems. There are 40 knot winds here with this one south of the Pribilofs and the one back to the west, about 50 knot winds. Otherwise, uh, for the Aleutians, not too bad, except the eastern Aleutians look for an increase in the northwest winds, uh, depending on where this system actually goes. Northeast, 40 to 45 knots there from St. Lawrence Island, becoming more east-northeast there, Kivalina, Point Hope, Cape Lisbon. And then northwest at about 25, but those winds increase as this low lifts northward. 50 knot winds blowing a crowd of Kamishak Gap there in across the Barren Islands and 40 to 55 knot winds over the southeast coast. Of course, that translates into widespread considerable moderate turbulence all of the Panhandle, North Gulf Coast to about Cordova, light to isolated moderate, south central Alaska, then back to considerable moderate for the Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, Bristol Bay, Aleutian Range, and the Alaska Peninsula.